we're going to use the definition of the derivative to differentiate f of x equals to sine of square root of x. So recall the definition of the derivative f prime of x is defined as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. To evaluate this derivative by definition, we're going to need two results. The first one is a trig identity, which says that sine of alpha minus sine of beta is equal to twice cosine of alpha plus beta divided by 2 times sine of alpha minus beta divided by 2. And the second result we're going to need is that the limit y approaches 0 of sine of y over y is equal to 1. So these two results will be used in the steps of evaluating this derivative by definition. So let's begin. f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of the square root of x plus h minus sine of square root of x divided by h. So we can call square root of x plus h alpha and just square root of x beta and apply result number one. So this becomes the limit as h goes to zero twice cosine of alpha plus beta, so that's square root x plus h plus the square root of x divided by two times the sine of alpha minus beta, so that's the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x divided by 2 and this is divided by h. The next step, even though here we can try plugging in 0 for h, we'll get 0 over 0 which is an indeterminate form. The next step is to do the following. We're going to, in the denominator here, add an x and subtract an x. So h can be written as x plus h minus x. So it's still h, but we added and subtracted x. And now I'm going to take x plus h and put them in parentheses. You'll see why this is necessary in just a second. The next step here is to factor x plus h minus x. So this is limit as h goes to 0. The numerator stays the same twice cosine of the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x over 2 times sine of square root of x plus h minus square root of x divided by 2. And now we'll factor the denominator as follows. This is square root of x plus h minus square root of x times square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Let's break this up into two limits. The first limit will be easy to evaluate. The second will take a little bit of work. So we're going to do the following. We're going to take the limit as h approaches 0. We'll take the 2 cosine of square root of x plus h plus the square root of x divided by 2. And below that we'll put square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. So this would be the limit that can be evaluated easily. And the second limit, the limit as h approaches 0, has sine of square root of x plus h minus square root of x divided by 2. And this is divided by square root of x plus h minus the square root of x. So now we're going to need another step and that step would be to multiply square root of x plus h minus square root of x by 2 over 2. So this is equal to, let's evaluate the first limit. The first limit as h goes to 0 we have 2 in the numerator inside the cosine as h goes to 0 we have 2 square root of x over 2 so that's, that's just square root of x so that gives us 2 cosine of square root of x 
and then in the denominator we have divided by 2 uh, square root of x times this 2 right here will go under square root of x plus h minus square root of x but this 2 in the numerator will factor out so this is times 1 half limit as h approaches 0 and this is sine of square root of x plus h minus square root of x divided by 2 divided by square root of x plus h minus square root of x also divided by 2. Now let's make the following substitution. Let y equal to square root of x plus h minus square root of x divided by 2. We note that as h approaches 0 square root of x plus h becomes square root of x so square root of x minus square root of x goes to 0 divided by 2 it goes to 0 so that means y is going to 0 so we can express this as follows these two cancel the 2 and 2 cancel the 1 half doesn't cancel so now let's simplify what we have we have cosine of square root of x divided by the square root of x right here and the 2 give us 2 square root of x times the limit as y goes to 0 of sine y over y and of course that's the second result this limit is 1 and our final answer is cosine of square root of x divided by 2 times square root of x so we just use the definition to find the derivative of sine of square root of x. And the answer is cosine of square root of x divided by 2 square root of x.